We have a wonderful ceremony ahead of us with a tradition now in its 13th year of having a student as our keynote speaker. We conducted a nationwide search and screened many highly qualified students ranging in age from high school to, to graduate students, all of whom are intent on pursuing a career in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics. And after an extensive search, yeah, go math. And after an extensive search, I'm a lawyer, I don't do math. Mm -mm. After an extensive search, we are pleased to have with us this evening the 2025 Keynote Scholarship recipient, Mr. Soham Gotham. The club is providing Soham with a $20,000 scholarship to support his academic pursuits. And I, I'm gonna share a little bit of news. I don't know if, I, I think I got approval, but uh, Soham will be going to the University of Pennsylvania next year, or this fall. I think we, took, we had a big role to play in this. Yeah, we'll take credit. Soham is a native of Downington, Pennsylvania, and he's joining us from Downington STEM Academy, where he is a senior in high school. I encourage everyone to read his entire list of impressive achievements within our program, but I do want to name a few. Through Soham's passion for advancing the use of AI, he drew from his experience as a cadet chief master sergeant in the U.S. Civil Air Patrol and engineered and engineered an AI-integrated FPV drone, earning recognition as a Coca-Cola Scholar semifinalist and recognition from the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory. He's in high school. Yeah. Soham delivered a TEDx talk on the future of deep space exploration and Mars colonization, highlighting how AI can drive our goals. He has co-founded Polaris, a high school-led rocketry organization whose pursuits have earned recognition from NASA. And after, if this was not enough, after developing a passion for flight, growing up as his dad's co-pilot, he earned his private pilot's student license at 16 with plans to become a private pilot by the time he graduates high school. At the University of Pennsylvania, Soham plans to study aerospace engineering and computer science, aiming to explore how software can integrate with space systems. He aspires to eventually start an aerospace company and contribute to the mission of sending humans to Mars, making humanity multiplanetary. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming tonight's 2025 keynote speaker to the podium, Mr. Soham Gotham. March 16th, 1926. It was a snowy day in Massachusetts. And in a large field, a man stood next to a 10-foot-tall metal rocket. In fact, it looked nothing like a rocket. The nozzle was mounted at the top and the fuel at the bottom. As the man hit ignition, 
the rocket soared 41 feet into the air for 2.5 seconds. That man's name was Dr. Robert H. Goddard. And his creation was the world's first liquid-propelled rocket. Now, years before that launch, when Dr. Goddard was 17 years old, the same age I am now, he dreamed of reaching Mars. <laughs> and on that journey, people mocked that dream and that vision. Almost every prototype rocket he built had failed at one point or another. Pessimists of his vision even said that he lacked the knowledge taught out in high school. Well, Dr. Goddard proved them wrong. He went on to build the foundation of modern rocketry, inspiring millions of innovators like me to chase seemingly impossible dreams. These three things, dreaming without limits, persisting through failure, and inspiring others, these three things have shaped my journey in aerospace. And tonight, I want to share with you snippets of my journey and how I've learned the most important lesson, that possibilities are endless. Let's talk about dreaming without limits. When I was 10 years old, I was fascinated with everything that flew. RC airplanes, bottle rockets, drones, you name it. But what caught my attention were two things, baking soda and vinegar. <laughs> These two substances mixed together could turn any soda bottle into a rocket ship. And that summer, my local CVS saw a suspicious rise in sale of these two ingredients. <laughs> and I proudly take responsibility. To launch a bottle rocket, I'd lay out all the supplies I needed on a cardboard box that I called Mission Control. This included the soda bottle, the cardboard fins, the stilts, and most importantly, duct tape. The first time I launched, my dad was with me, and he counted down from three, two, one. The trajectory was perfect. Well, perfect until it sailed over my fence and made an unscheduled landing on Mr. Kim's roof. I looked at my dad and said, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> and just like that, the rest of my summer was spent doing projects just like this. And that is what I, when I found what I loved, aerospace. When I got into high school, my projects got bigger and bigger. And one of my friends, Yug and I, we created an amateur rocketry organization called Polaris Aerospace. I know the name sounds a bit fancy, but it was just two teenagers working out of a garage. Our vision for Polaris was to be the first high schoolers to send a rocket into space. Ironically, we call the two-stage rocket separation anxiety. <laughs> but of course, the path to success wasn't exactly smooth. We have had many, many failures along the way, and our most memorable learning experience was when our 13-foot rocket nosedived straight down to Earth when the parachute disconnected and floated peacefully away. It was at this point in my young career where my dream of working for NASA had formed. And like any ambitious kid with zero qualifications, I started Googling NASA internships. And unfortunately, on almost all the internship postings, there was a tiny eligibility requirement standing in my way called being 16. I quickly learned that patience isn't a teenage virtue. Everyone told me that I was too young and that I had to wait a few years. But if you ask me, some dreams are too big to sit around and wait for. Having to wait almost two years to be eligible for a NASA program wasn't going to stop me. I'd find another way in. This leads me to my second point, persistence through failure. 
In my sophomore year of high school, I discovered the Civil Air Patrol Cadet Program, which is the United States Air Force Auxiliary. The program was perfect for an impatient aerospace enthusiast like me. But there was a catch. In order to rank up, every cadet needed to complete something called encampment, which was seven days of mental and physical challenges. For me, this took place in December of 2023 at Camp Blanding Joint Training Center in Florida. The moment my cadets and I stepped off the bus, our sergeants and our instructors greeted us with yelling that echoed throughout the grounds. It seriously brought an urgency to everything we did. On day one, we realized that Sergeant Henry had a particular talent for finding imperfections. Our boots were never shiny, f shiny enough, our rack never tidy enough, and our uniforms never got above a three out of five stars, despite our best efforts. The standards felt impossible to reach, and we could never achieve perfection. It wasn't until the fifth night of encampment that I realized that it wasn't about achieving perfection. It was about persisting. It was about growing stronger, knowing that you may never get validation. That night around midnight, we were awakened by a surprise fire drill. We stumbled outside in nothing but our PT uniforms in the biting cold weather. I could hear the chattering teeth of my fellow wingmen, and at attention, I looked around a little bit, and I saw that not a single cadet had moved. Not a single cadet broke formation. No one complained. And in times like this, that is when perseverance matters most. I can connect my encampment experience to how pioneers in aerospace face their challenges. People like Goddard didn't succeed because the conditions were ideal or everything went perfectly. They succeeded because when rockets exploded, when calculations failed, when funding disappeared, and when people doubted their dreams, they persisted. Now carrying this list lesson with me, I returned to my dream of working for NASA. When I finally turned 16, I immediately submitted my application, and after months and months of anxious waiting, I had finally received the news I had been hoping for. I was accepted. I got to work on a pretty cool, and pretty cool project involving finding exoplanets. And you can imagine when I say this, I truly felt like a character in the movie Interstellar. This all leads me to my last point. While I dreamed without limits and persisted through every failure, there was still one thing which I wanted to do, inspire others. I love how inspiration is like a chain reaction. It's something you can share. One person's impossible dream becomes another person's impossible dream. And so I've realized the best way to reach the stars is not to journey alone. It's to bring others with you. Here at the Dr. Goddard Memorial Dinner, I'm, I realized that my journey couldn't have been possible without the countless people supporting me. To my family, my mom, my dad, my brother, Siobhan, who are here tonight, thank you for always believing in me. To Dr. Brown, my physics teacher, who my friends and I call the GOAT, the greatest teacher of all time. And to everyone in this room, who supports young dreamers like me. I want to say thank you. As I wrap up, I want to leave you with this. Don't ask if your dreams are big. Ask if they're big enough. Dare to dream without limits. Persevere through every failure. And be the spark that guides the next generation. Because possibilities are endless. Thank you. So much. Wow, the standing ovation. Wonderful.
Goodness, Soham, that was marvelous, and I really look forward to working for you one day. <laughs> yeah. Your family must be very proud. I know we are all very proud of you, and can't wait to hear about your adventures at University of Pennsylvania and your success when you join us in the space community. As mentioned earlier, we had many remarkable students apply for this year's Keynote Scholarship Award. Because of our industry's tremendous generosity, we've begun to recognize the runner-up for the Top Student Award. This year, that honor goes to Divya Krishna, a senior at the Edison High School STEM Academy in New Jersey. Ms. Krishna plans to pursue her bachelor's degree and a PhD in aerospace engineering with the intention of building the next generation of spacecraft to traverse Mars. Now she told me earlier, she's got a lot of choices. I think it was Georgia Tech wants you. Full ride. Yeah, full, full ride, full ride. But no, that's not good enough for her. MIT wants her. But no, 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 she's holding out for Stanford. So in about a week or so, she's going to text me. And we're going to celebrate again when she tells me she's going to Stanford. <laughs> the club is providing Ms. Krishna with a $10,000 scholarship to support her academic pursuits.